Today's word is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 13. If you find the Bible verse, we shall read it together. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God, for who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person, which is him. So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the Word, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. When we impart these, in, we're not by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The pastor will come and give us the word of God. Last week, we talked about uh, from nothing to everything. And we were saying that God created everything with his word, and that's the most important thing. And that's why listening to the word is the most um, the, the first thing that the remnants must hold on. And also the adults here also must be always concentrated in the word. And we, as I mentioned last week, I told you that we were going to talk about what is covenantal prayer. So today we will see the first part because uh, today I'm going to keep it short. And maybe next week we'll have lunch and we'll have more leisure. If you're hungry, you cannot concentrate. I always say like that. So uh, as today's title is Covenantal Prayer. Covenant. I, I forgot my English. Covenantal. <laughs> Covenantal prayer. Today's verse were first Corinthians chapter two, ten thirteen. And today is the first part. Okay. Covenantal prayer. The introduction of today is just two point. Christ is the answer, right? And the second point is worship is everything. Uh, this is the pulpit message we received today. Why Christ is the answer and why worship is everything? It's simple. God created us for this. God created us to worship him. God created us so we can have the answer only in Christ. If we don't have the answer in only Christ, what's going to happen in our life? We will not find the true answer. That's why it's not just about good messages. It's not about good sermons. It's not about good, men, uh, good things I say here. It's how do I worship to God? So in the Bible says a lot of words, but one of the words that says is adore. Adore him. Worship him. All of this is referred to giving yourself. This is worship. It's not receiving, it's giving yourself. That's why in the Bible it says, give yourself as a living sacrifice. Yourself. And who gave himself as a living sacrifice? Literally as a living sacrifice? Do you know? Who? Who? Jesus? Before Jesus, Isaac, right? 
He actually gave himself as a living sacrifice, literally. Like he was put in the burnt offering, right? He was put on that table and he was going to be killed. Isaac knew what was worship to the point that he could give his life. But I was always imagining how can Isaac be just, you know, still his dad is like, you know, putting the thing, the woods, and then he has a knife in his hand. Wouldn't you escape? I would escape. I wouldn't even go that early morning, right? I wouldn't w- even wake up. But Isaac knew what is worship to that point. So in other words, it was a living sacrifice. But what happened? With the life of Isaac, you cannot give worship, right? So God prepared what? The lamb. God prepared Christ. That's why you hold on to Christ only in worship, not yourself. You give yourself, but you hold on to Christ. That's the pulpit message of today. And I hope that throughout the week, you receive the guidance through the word, not the good messages, but what has God given you as a grace through the word. So today's content, what is covenantal prayer? We've been talking about constantly what is prayer, right? First point, prayer. Uh, You guys have been having a lot of forums about prayer. How to pray, why to pray, when to pray, what content. But the most important prayer of your life is the covenantal prayer. What is covenantal prayer? Do you know what's covenantal prayer? It's just holding on to the covenant and praying. It's very simple. So what's the first point of prayer inside this covenant of prayer? Prayer is enjoying what? Emmanuel. This is prayer. Prayer is enjoying Emmanuel first. That's the first thing. Second, what is prayer? When you enjoy Emmanuel... Time passes, and what's going to happen? God will give you his prayer topics. This is prayer. Not my prayer topics, but prayer topics given by who? By God. This happens when you enjoy Emmanuel first. Third point. Then you realize that this prayer is connected to what? To this heavenly mandate. Heavenly mandate means 천명. It comes from where? From heavens above. From God himself. This is prayer. What is prayer? Prayer transcends your levels, your standards. This is prayer. You might pray today, God, I want to preach the gospel to 237 nations. Is that possible for you? If you pray, this changes. So all these levels and standards go to whose standards? God levels, God standards. This is prayer. So in other words, prayer is acknowledging that God is with you. And you're enjoying it. So what is covenant? Uh, Because we're splitting the messages by part today. That's why I'm just showing you what's covenant. And then we will keep going a little by little. What is covenantal prayer, okay? What is covenant? You all know this. It's a promise. But 
this promise was prophesied. It was prophesied. It was in his prophecy. I will write better prophecy for you, so I think you cannot see this letter well. Okay. In other words, this is a prophecy. Covenant was a prophecy. But this was not just finished as a promise, but it actually was fulfilled. This promise, prophecy, was fulfilled. You know what fulfill means? It actually came. It was actually, you know, made. So it means that this covenant, it, it meant to what? To be fulfilled. It was meant to be fulfilled. This is the covenant. So in the Bible, what is the covenant then? When they hold on to the covenant, what happened? Genesis chapter 41, 38. As it was promised, God was with who? With Joseph. Exodus chapter 3. Verse 1 to 20, God said to Moses, I will be with you wherever you go. I will be your witness. God will work through the life of who? Of Moses. This was promised to him. And that was the covenant. Third point, 1 Samuel 16, 13. It says that the Spirit of God rushed over who? Over Samuel. In other words, God was with who? With Samuel. It was promised. Haggai 2, 1 to 9. God himself will make his glory greater than the, begin, than the first one. This, this is a promise. So this promise was fulfilled in the Old Testament, but also was fulfilled in where? In the New Testament. Matthew chapter 16, 16. It didn't finish like that, but 1 Corinthians three sixteen. Now, the Holy Spirit is with us. This is the covenant that God has given to us. That God will be with who? That's the first covenant God gave, really, to these remnants. But how can God be with us now? Through Christ. Before was by the Spirit of God. But now, through who? Through Christ. So when you pray, what's the first thing you need to hold on? Do you know what is? Simple, right? Christ. Is Christ visible? Can I hold on to it? But where is Christ then? Where is the Holy Spirit? Is within me, but do I feel it? No. That's why you hold on to his word. It's actually better if you pray holding on to the exact word that you see. And then naturally you would train little by little, and this covenantal prayer contents will come out from you. So conclusion. What is the conclusion of today? Remnants needs to know what's worship. 
Do you know actually how remnants realize how worship is so important? Do you know? When do you guys realize when worship is so important? Do you, did you feel it when the coronavirus started in the beginning? That you couldn't come here and you were like, oh, I want to come to church, but I cannot come and all that thing, right? Remember? But this age that we live will be worst. We'll be limited to come here. We won't be able to praise like loud. Or we won't be able to come here and listen to the messages, right? So that's why you prepare now. You enjoy what is given to you. So connect your worship with today. Every day. Today is the most important thing in worship. Not tomorrow. Not like a ah, Sunday message. No, Sunday worship. No, today is your worship. So you come here and receive grace and confirm the answers that God has prepared for you. That's worship. And you give yourself. Right? So it's not about following the messages. It's following Christ. Following that grace that God has given to you. So I hope that today, while you do uh, a short forum with your teams, you can actually talk about what do you do in your worship time? Or what do you do actually to prepare yourself to worship? Some of them, some of you guys will say, I don't worship every day. But you can actually hear the forums of others and learn from them. So when I, when I start to worship in the beginning, the first thing I do is, this is my way, right? It's very simple. I, only, I start by giving thanks, thanksgiving. That's the first thing I do when I wake up, the first thing. And then from there, I start doing all these things, praising, uh, listening to the messages, all these things. That's what I do. But it starts with what? Thanksgiving. So I hope that today you enjoy worship, not just the worship time. Go home. Think about once in your life about worship. So I hope that today you receive strength and receive grace and through your forums, really learn about how to worship God correctly. And you heard today, but have forum with that. Nothing is wrong to have forum about what is true worship, okay? Let's pray, and we will uh, finish with the Lord's Prayer. God, thank you for giving us a church. Thank you for giving us a pastor that only speaks and preach the gospel. Let us hold on to that message that you have given us of only Christ. Let us not hold on to the things that we think that are good, but let us hold on to the blessings that you have preached to us today in the pulpit messages. Also, let us not be hasty and let us not be anxious about our circumstances, but let us only focus what you have given to us since the beginning, which is your covenant and the fulfillment of this covenant, who is Christ. Bless all of our remnants and TCKs. May, be they, may they be the main protagonists to save 237 nations and also saving the families, the fields, and the regions. Thank you, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, because of our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.